This video is part of Lesson 1 in the course Passion to Preach. In this video, preaching is a privilege. The first thing we need to realize when we think about preaching is that preaching is a huge privilege. What a wonderful thing that we are allowed to preach the Word of God. There are many, many privileges in preaching the Word of God. The first one is that you are allowed to study the Word of God. That's what you need to do in order to preach a sermon. So you spend time in the Word of God, you are digging for gold in the Word of God. And like Paul says, the farmer is the first one who can rejoice in the fruits of the harvest. So what happens is when you study the Word of God in order to prepare a sermon, you are the first one to rejoice in what you discover in the Word of God. So you are the first one with the joy of the Lord in your heart. That's the first privilege. The second privilege of uh, preparing a sermon and preaching is that you are working with things that have eternal value. When you are, what the Bible says, a co-worker of God, an instrument in the hand of the Holy Spirit, you're not just dealing with business or just doing a job. You are working in the kingdom of God. You are building God's kingdom together with him. What a wonderful privilege that is. So that's why Paul says, woe to me if I do not preach. Because it's so wonderful, this urge inside to, to share in the word of God and to share the word of God with other people. So that's the second privilege. You are working with eternal value. The third privilege is that we are working with a promise. When you preach, there is always a wonderful promise of God. It's the promise that whatever you do when you preach, that the sermon will not be in vain. The word of God delivered to people will never be in vain. There will always be result. That's the promise that God gives to Isaiah by the mouth of Isaiah in uh, Isaiah 55. And I want to read this with you. It's in chapter 55, verse 10, where it says, as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, says the Lord, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I send it. So the word of God is like the rain and the snow. It comes down on the people, it comes down into their hearts, and it will not return in vain to God. It will accomplish what he wants it to accomplish. And what does God want his word to accomplish? He wants people to be saved by his words. He wants people to be renewed by his words. And that will happen every time that his words are preached. So the third privilege is we are working with a promise. What a wonderful privilege that is. And the fourth privilege is that when we work, when we are preaching and we are teaching people from the word of God, we know that we are so close to God. It, it, it means that you can only share the word of God if you live the word of God yourself. So preaching urges you to bring into practice what you preach. There's a beautiful saying in English which says, don't talk the talk if you don't walk the walk. So preparing a sermon uh, motivates and stimulates you to bring these words of God into practice. It will change your life as well. It's not only there to change the lives of other people. First of all, it will change your life. So preparing a sermon and delivering a sermon is kind of a guarantee that you will actually live close to God because you're forced to live close to God in order to bring this word of God close to his people. So there are many, many privileges in preaching the word of God, but it's also a huge responsibility. 
Because you cannot bring the word of God unless you take it very serious. You cannot bring the word of God for your own gain. You cannot bring the word of God for your own glory and your own honor. It's not about you. It's about God. You are preaching the words of the Most High God. That's why Paul says, who is able to do this task? So we need to realize that yes, it is a huge privilege that God has chosen us to preach his words, but at the same time, it's a huge responsibility. And how do we deal with this responsibility? Will we deal in the right way with it if we are really humble? A preacher must be humble. Humble to realize that he is just an instrument, an instrument in the hand of God. And it's not about you, it's about the glory of God. That makes you humble. And at the same time, we need to realize that we are completely dependent on the power of the Holy Spirit. We need to realize when we preach that we cannot, we cannot force people to believe the word of God. We can hardly influence people to be convinced about the word of God. So when we preach and we realize the responsibility of preaching, we realize that it's not something you can do in your own power or you can accomplish by human wisdom or by preaching techniques. When you really want people to be convinced of the word of God and to be changed by the word of God, you would realize that's the work of the Holy Spirit and of the Holy Spirit alone. You can only preach the word of God if God has called you to do that. Because that's the basis, that's the foundation for every preacher. Why do, do I stand up in a pulpit or on a stage with the word of God? Because God wants me to do that. God sends me to do that. God calls me to do that. We need to realize, we need to be sure about the call of God to preach. Otherwise, who am I? Who am I to stand up with the word of God? But if he has called me, I have the authority and he will give me the ability and the gifts to preach the word of God. This is what Paul means when he writes to the congregation of Roman in Romans 10 about preaching. Let me read it to you. In Romans 10 verse 14, Paul says, when it's about how people come to to faith in God, how then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. So how can they preach if they are not sent. You can only preach the word of God if you are sent by God. How do you know if you are sent by God? What are the characteristics of, of being called by God? Well, I think we can mention a few things. First of all, what I read in the word of God is a preacher has a huge urge inside of him to preach. So that's what Paul says when he says, woe to me if I do not preach. That's what he also means. It means I need to preach. He, he, he urges Timothy, his disciple, and he says, be willing in season and out season to preach the word of God. So whenever they wake you up in the middle of the night, you can preach. What time of the day, what time of the year, what time of the season in your life? Preach the word of God. So it's like a burning fire inside of you. You long to bring the beautiful words or the very intense words of God to his people. So one of the characteristics of being called 
and I dare to say most important characteristic of being called by God is you have a, a love for the word of God, a love for God, and you love the people. And when you love people, you want them to be as close to Jesus as possible. And when that feeling is burning inside your heart, then you can say, yes, I am also called to preach. God has sent me as well. You have been watching the video Preaching is a Privilege in the Course Passion to Preach. We hope to see you again next lesson.